Geek Speak Man Cave Edition special. <laughs> yeah, what? What are you talking about? Man Cave. Man around cave. It's a warehouse. That's yeah, all, it's all right. Fantastic. Fair enough. Yeah. I've gone from weeks. one man cave to another man cave, basically. What, did you escape from somewhere this morning, did you? My house is like a lair. Is it's, it? Well, yeah. But pretty. a hero's lair or a villain's lair? Ah, uh, it's got the shield and the... He's a hero. Yeah, it's a hero. Yeah. It's Mr. A hero. Paul Mason, creator of the awesome comic book, Soldier Legacy. That's the first graphic novel. That's been, like, hot cakes. When did you bring that out? That was last year? Uh, yeah, uh, April last April year. Last, that which yep. was Gold Coast Supernova? Yeah, it was for Melbourne and Gold Coast. Yep. Yep. That's and right. you're going, uh, you're doing Gold Coast and Melbourne? I'm now. doing again. Yeah, they announced it uh, yesterday. I'm Did going they? with the. the <laughs> it, my, my mate Chris Aquera does uh, Dark Detective Sherlock Holmes. Which and is a wicked book. Check it out as well. M- Marvel and DC stuff. He. Uh, he he sent an email like responding to the to the invite and stuff and there's six of us going from um like blackout comics yep and and various other things and his reply like because he uses shorthand he's just replied regards g6 as in like group six or something actually he doesn't even know what the fucking g stands for <laughs> so the uh, the organizers ran with it so they've called us like this g6 uh, group for the show Super and team Yeah pretty much Super team of Aussie creators. I'll be like the thing The reluctant oh, Okay You know <laughs> So anyway It should be alright You're not ugly like the thing uh, Man pretty ladies Man pretty <laughs> I'm He's getting bashful it. too Look at you. We got another oh, couch I can sit on or yeah. I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> The arm goes around But Paul Mason You've um, you've been knocking This kind of work out For what Two three years now You've been doing Soldier Legacy Yeah uh, I did it I started I did it for uni The first issue It was just like A, a, a project and, yep. and 2010 Was when I first Published it um, and it's been going Great guns since then Yeah I was lucky um, to 2011 Black House picked it up um, then the TV commercial later that year and yeah, Yui? Just been Yui yeah, 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 yeah I mean, that's where I first actually saw The Soldier Oh, fair enough. Um, I saw a link on YouTube and someone said check this out and, and that's when I think I contacted you uh, as a retailer after that not long after that Yeah, no, that's true Yeah, 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 yeah it was yeah. All, all thanks to you Insurance was, you not a sponsor of Geekspeak you <laughs> <laughs> They can be <laughs> Actually, i got to go to Korea mid-year so if you want to sponsor Yeah I'll, fuck, I'll tattoo you on my face if but you yeah. can get me there. Yeah. Righto, so uh, you'll see Paul Mason in Korea with Geek Speak tattooed up here. Uh, <laughs> Yui on the back. <laughs> and whoever else wants to take the lower end. Okay. It'll be good because like in uh, my last world titles, I, I separated the guy. Sh- it was Canada. I separated his shoulder from his collarbone and stuff. So if You're I could just... that's a good thing? I, well, no, 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 because I can then point to the back and go, well, look, if you need insurance... Yeah. <laughs> Always thinking, are you? Yeah, yeah. And you just told me off camera that you're not much of a businessman. Like, you forget numbers and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but he's thinking of the wicked deals already, this guy. Look, I just want to be comfortable. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to have to calculate how much and budgets and all that sort of thing. Look, if I'm getting paid enough, that's okay. That's good. I can't Especially picture, like, dudes like Will I Am and stuff doing their taxes back in the, the States. They don't have to worry about that. No, they don't do their own taxes. Yeah, they have exactly. these things called, like, accountancy firms. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Because really? Yeah. Yeah. they got big money. Hey. Yeah, we don't even pay taxes. We hide from the government up here. Oh, um, the more you learn. <laughs> you, I want to, I want to ask you: How did you get into drawing and, and, and the soldier legacy? Like, how did it come about? I know you said for for university for a, like a an assessment. Or yeah, something? yeah. I I did a bachelor of animation at uh, Queensland College of Arts, yep. and I went on and did my honours year. And in honours, you could take a, a a small aspect of something and, and study it. And I wanted to look at you know Jack Kirby and Stan Lee because they were influenced were, by Jack Kirby aren't you? yeah 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 and and like these things don't come from a bottle like uh, there had to be some reason as to like where they get their inspiration from yep. so that was sort of my starting point looking at their work and you know because Jack was in the industry uh, and Stan were in the industry for 20 years before they they hit the Marvel period that everyone sort of goes on about the marvel age the, the yeah e- exactly yeah. so it's not like you know like as as much as lee, mr lee likes to say it's not like you're sitting in an office and a, and a fucking fly walks up the wall and he goes oh i'll create the mother universe yeah, you know what i mean stan lee uh, you know, and he is he's a great um statesman for comics uh, you know, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah very charismatic and yeah. and i when i when i met him i almost fangirled like i kept it in, in, in check and really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Almost, almost. Well, I tell you what, I would too. A little like, bit, little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a little pee came he, out. He's, he's, he's the godfather of comics. Yep. He really is, but uh, he didn't get there by himself, did he? Like, oh, no. No, 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 Jack, no. Jack got overlooked. 
Yeah, a he lot. did. He did uh, uh, quite a bit, even back in the day. Like that was part of the reason why he left in 1970. He just yeah. he had like a, a folder full of hundreds of clippings where it was stating Stan Lee was the sole creator of the Marvel universe. Yeah. You know, when when Marvel got sold off, uh, I think it was Cadence who bought the company yes. in '68. He, he finally got on the phone to, to some of the heads up because he was still waiting on his royalties from Martin Goodman. He kept promising him, oh, we'll look after you, Jack. You know, oh, you well, just keep drawing. Is. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, I was owed this, this certain amount of royalties. And they say, who are you? We thought Stan drew all the books. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it was just... Uh, but that's the way companies were back then. Yeah. Um, deals are different today with creators. They're oh, of course. More, a hell of a lot more fair yeah. today. But, um, well, it depends surely. who you ask. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I watch Twitter. Yeah. I, I get paid nothing for Geek Speak. I tell you, <laughs> they chain me here, Paul. <laughs> um, but, but uh, you know, it's changing today. It's, and Jack is mm. finally starting to get more credit for, you know, today in, in, in things. The industry looks back. He is. Yeah, the industry in particular. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of high profile people, like particularly like Jim Lee and, and, and that sort of thing, who, who look back and go, well, you know, he was a real deal. And, yeah. and uh, that's a good thing. Um, the general public, in general movie going public, still have a, a long way to go. Um, but we can hope they'll get educated one day. I, I do. Yeah. I do. Do you walk out of a movie, Marvel movie, and just kind of stand at the front and kind of go, by the way, people, Jack. Because uh, <laughs> no, I tell you what, if you came up to me at the end of a movie and, and was saying that, I'd stand there and listen to you because you scare me. You're, you're tall. You're, I'm little. Sure. Lock the door. Yeah, just like, you're going to back listen. down. <laughs> yeah. no, um, I'm going to tell you about the king, Mr. Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's cool. And I, and I do appreciate the work that, that Stan did. You know, he only had a handful of artists. He edited all those books. He gave all the characters a unique voice. And... Uh, a lot of um, added subtext to the to the drawings, you yeah. know what I mean? So he was a true showman, though. What what helps? Yeah, uh, you know, Stan was going out on his soapbox essentially and promoting this is comics. That's right, and, and you know we, that's what we've got to thank Stan Lee for today. Comics are so popular, and, and especially Marvel on that today. Thanks to Stan Lee, but he did yeah. get there by himself. He had a lot of help. There's a lot of other guys, that, artists back then too. Oh, you know, Steve Ditko, uh, Gene Colan. That's right, Sal Buscema, John Buscema, yeah. um, all that sort of stuff. All those guys. So. Yeah. Um, now I want to ask you too because you know you're not influenced just by Jack Kirby there's a few others who else come on uh, <laughs> float your boat yeah 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 look I uh, you know there's that sort of thing um, <laughs> uh, John Romita Jr yeah. he's, he's probably one of my big ones um, I have to say I've never I've never had a moment where I've met somebody and then walked away and just gone <gasps> you know what I mean like I met him at San Diego 2011 you got to go to San Diego, you lucky bugger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went went last year and the year before. So Two years in a row you've been. Yeah, oh, and and guy. coming up for three, p- perhaps. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, not well, locked in yet, or it, we're waiting on something that that um, you know could be good for me and good good for for another writer buddy of mine. And cool. uh, there's a possibility that if if that if that's locked in, then San Diego would be silly not to miss. So can uh, can you take me in your luggage? <laughs> I gotta take all my sparring gear with me because I might have to go from there to Korea. I'll film for the sparring gear, just be general, okay? <laughs> not the face. Whatever you do, not the face. Uh, <laughs> but any of the image creators? Were you be like? Did, you're about my age and would have been heavily yeah, yeah, influenced. Yeah, yeah. yeah, look, when I was reading comics, I got in through Spider Man. Yeah. And. Was uh, it McFarlane Spider Man when he was doing it back in the day? or? It was. Uh, who was drawing at the time? It was Mark Bagley who was drawing um, Amazing. Yeah. They had. Um, Tom Lyle was doing um, the regular Spider Man title. Sal Buscema was still doing um, Spectacular. And I think Weber Spider Man was still going at the time, which yep. was Alex Selvig. I can't pronounce Something his like, last yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I started getting back issues. Um, there used to be a really good secondhand bookstore in um, Coolangatta. Yeah. And yeah, and I started getting back issues of Todd and Eric Larson. Eric Larson, Eric I was Larson really had a good in. Run on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really d- dug his style as a kid. Yeah. So I got I got into it via there, and then um, of course John Romita Jr. Um, picked up a lot of the drawing chores back in the day because I was I got in just before the Clone Saga hit. Oh yes. Yeah, so I followed all that all the way through. I, I, I look back, a lot of people it copped a lot of flack, Clone Saga. As a kid, I, I didn't. I loved, I loved it. it. Oh, and I got into Batman during the whole Nightfall thing. Oh, okay. Which, and everyone goes today, oh Nightfall. And I'm like, that was what got me into comics. Is that the Iron Man thing? Or no, no, as we had. The right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it right, Paul. God, I'm not a Batman know. fan. I wasn't but. a DC person too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's when I got into it, and and those '90s classic '90s stories were fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Like I, as a kid, I thought, and 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 it must it must be a subconscious thing in the Soldier Legacy because I thought when when Ben Riley goes well I'm going to be a, 
I'm going to power and responsibility and all that bullshit. He got the, the Spider-Man jumper from the Natural History Museum and yeah. tore the arms off. Yeah. As a kid, I thought that was awesome. You were so, running around doing that, weren't you? Well, no. Your <laughs> and your going, oh, stop that. I was a fat kid. I couldn't wear t-shirts. Oh, get out of it. I was. Dead really? set. So yeah. you were like the poster boy for, hey, you know, if you're a comic uh, fan, if you got you bullied, comic reader. I'm telling you, I got heavily bullied. Did you? Oh, yeah. Yep. And, yeah. I, and I, I used to play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Uh, but he grows a better beard. I can't grow a beard. Um, I, I played soccer as a kid. I sucked. I played football. I was good at tackling. Yeah. Uh, soccer was the same. I was good at knocking people over. Um, that, was the si- that was the size thing, though, was it? I was taller than everybody always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was a fat kid, and, and a lot of the kids used to pick on me quite heavily, whether it be for the red hair, the freckles, the buck teeth. Um, I started doing, like, stand-up gigs in year five, like, in front of the school, and I remember getting water ballooned and hit with sticks and ice really? rocks and yeah me, yeah yeah so i i started doing kung fu and then i did so you kicked karate then, didn't you? well yeah i started training and then by by high school by year 12 i'd lost a lot of my baby fat and 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 then uh wasn't until i think 10 years ago i st- like i started working in a gym and was teaching aerobics classes and doing martial art classes and i can't i think i got my black belt and 2001 yeah so yeah, have you ever made a list since? of those kids that picked on you in high school you ever had like Paul's black book <laughs> and you're gonna do you know net, look at you now and you're gonna go around and just like you know they'll be at home ding dong like, do you remember me uh, I'm Paul Mason you picked on me in school oh yeah bang you know we'll read about it I'll be in the soldier legacy that'll be an update picked on all these high school bullies I did meet one um, awesome story Paul I've seen him at a gym like years ago but there was once where I was up on the school stage and everyone waves and they call your name and stuff yep. I got crash tackled on the stage by some some dingus that came to school but I I got hit I hit the concrete um I thought he was a mate of mine. I, I realised he wasn't, but you can't do anything when you're in front of the school and the principals and teachers and it's stuff. True. So later on, I'm leaving the school and, and he goes, um, uh, oh, you're sorry. He's hanging out the front with his mate, like drinking or smoking or whatever. Oh, you're sorry for that. And I'm like, yeah. And I kept walking. I got two blocks away and I hear, Paul, who's your daddy? Like screaming out, who's your daddy? I don't know if it was me being naive or brave or dumb or whatever. I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. So I walked back up to him. I walked the two blocks back to him. Took my glasses off, put in my top pocket. I went, Brett Mason's my father. <laughs> Do you know him? And he goes, Oh no, it's like sorry, man. Shake your head and walked away. So that's my my fuck you. You should know what you should have done when he called out. Who's your daddy? You should have turned around and go, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Whoop your ass. <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Peter, I didn't. I never knew. And have you ever uh, put that in the soldier yeah. Like, have you ever let people know on your side or anything that you were picked on? Or no, it's it's because uh, you've overcome it. Obviously, like, I mean, look. At yeah, the look. It's the it's the let let's put it this way. There's a lot of stuff that that. Uh, been through as a kid that that that's nothing yeah. you know what i mean or like you know so a lot of people do put that kind of stuff somewhere in their future work they'll they'll put it in there and just a bit of a it's a way of dealing with it i guess coping with it uh, no. you know, i no, deal with it by uh, slapping our director around the head <laughs> every week he needs it he really needs a it vietnam flashbacks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was in nam yeah find you in a cold shower and the <laughs> fucking shaking just another f- another saturday morning I yeah yeah saturday night um <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got off track, and I apologise for yeah, that. That's a worry. So, but um, I, I want to ask. Sure. Would you, if, if if someone from DC Marvel came along and said, "Paul, we want you to come work on," you know, but you've got to go in the, the grind house kind of thing, you know, where you're big editor hand, you know, your creativity's kind of reined in a little bit. Oh, would you do it? Would you oh turn yeah. And go, yep, I'd, you'd sell your soul out. Look, I uh, I don't call it selling my soul. Like uh, t- between you and me, and and, I, and it's all over now because the the editors left DC. Um, gone on to bigger and better but last year we were sitting in DC offices at Burbank and oh really yeah yeah, yeah. and that was awesome like you, you walk in the foyer and they have um, the big Heath Ledger Joker costume and glass case next to the Christopher Reeve Superman you know and then, you have another nerd out moment a little bit because yeah. we got in there and they had a, a full size chessboard with all DC characters and, and it was um, 4th of July so holiday so yeah. the office was practically empty and um you go in there and it's just wall to wall like Batman, pinball, arcade machines, um, comic books all up the wall. So how much did you um, smuggle back? In your <laughs> well, actually, while we're there, he goes, do you, want, do, you want, "Do you want some comics?" And we're like, 
Oh, oh no, no, that's okay. And he goes, no, no, you take got some. Free comics right. and didn't yeah. take them. No, no, we did. Oh. We took yeah, a couple, say, couple of graphic novels and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Walking great. Like oh, that. I'll take A two M. It was around about the new fifty two, and there are a lot of titles I didn't pick up. Yeah. Um, I think I only jumped on board two or three when it when it rolled out. So. I uh, picked up a couple of first issues of stuff. and So yeah. the, the project you were there to talk about with them never came off? Or? No, well, look, we were going there to... to uh, like, I, I got a, a good review, and, and the editor is a lovely guy, you know, gentleman in the industry, and, you know, he was basically... At the time, he, he, he was quite, like... Even he felt a little bit under the thumb as to, to you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff in terms of the, the economic... Uh, environment over there in America uh, and the way things are going where it, it's difficult for new people to to, to uh, land those positions because there are a lot of really good writers and artists in the industry at the moment and, and who are you going to go with? Yeah, the, the, tru the trusted guy or the... Someone you who know. you know you're going to get sales from. Yeah. Like, here's the unknown kid off the, off the block. Yeah, and and, 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 but I did get like the best feedback I've ever got is that thing like I'd love to do something with you but we we don't have anything going at the moment, at the yeah. moment. and that was a big confidence boost to me because I know I've got a long way to go in, in my progress yeah, and but artwork you can only and keep growing and, and I tell you what little personal thing I'd love to see you on Batman <laughs> I'm a Batman fan and you, you drawing Batman I tell you what you'll have me stalking your house out getting stuff dude started. dude you got Greg Capullo on it at the moment what Dave Finch is still doing the other title yeah, I yeah, think sure I don't know in somewhere on no, a Batman no, title no, no, no. how about Green Arrow then I'll, look, I'll do any. I'll do anything <laughs> I would be given. Don't say that on camera. Okay? That'd be misconstrued. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Mason, I'll do anything. I will. Like <laughs> you know, if they said if they said tomorrow that that they were going to redo um, Buana Beast, I'd draw it. You know <laughs> what I mean? Actually, that'd be wicked. You draw Buana Beast. <laughs> Dog welder. Dog welder. Yeah, from ex Hitman. exactly. Spin that out. I'd, cool. I'd love to do a war title, like a grave digger or a. Uh, a Sergeant Rock or something. I you feel like Sergeant they, Rock would be pretty cool. Yeah, I'd love yeah, to do I'd, something I'd like that. I'd pick that up. I'd read that. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. Appreciate that. I'll talk to. I hope DC. more people do. I'll ring David Dio and go. Listen, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be like, "Who the hell are you?" You'll uh, go to yeah. And who who the hell are you? And who are you talking who's about? This Paul Mason guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so. is great. Go, like, um, so if you do go back to San Diego, hopefully some more deals coming out over there this year. Or look, you know, I go over there. I don't. I I go over there with no expectations. I've I've never I've never gone in over there thinking I'm going to pick up a deal. Yep. I just go over there and and show my work to to people that I, I respect and say. Can I get some feedback on my work? Because uh, if you're drawing the work and you're not bra and you're not confident enough to to stick it in front of say Walter Simonson and say help, yeah, what do you think? Feedback. Then you know you're not going to grow as a, as an artist. Like I, I ran the gauntlet in Brisbane and and got Howard Chaik and I asked him um, at the at the cocktail thing. Can he's I? He's a top bloke too. He's a he's a fantastic guy. And I said, can you please give me a folio review? And he said, I'll only give it if you can take it. Yeah. And I went, lay it on me. Because yeah. like the, the 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 whole concept is like guys like Jack Kirby and Joe Simon back in the forties that you know they didn't have time to sit at home and doodle and work on their art. It was just you know was a lot of it. pump out the pages and it, and it if you make mistakes, it's there for the world to see. But keep moving on and 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 that's what I'm trying to do with I this series. I saw an interview with John Romita Jr. a few years back, and someone said, "Describe your style." And he said... Deadline uh, style. He, he said, yeah. deadline style. And he said, I get it in, get it done so I can get the paycheck in. Yep. He said, because you know, I've got kids and a wife. Yeah. And, um, and that was Kirby's attitude to yeah, it all too. a lot too. of them were back in the day. That's what yeah. they had to do. Um, Todd McFarlane, he'll tell you himself too. He used mm. to um, be hunched over the drawing board, just constantly writing, you know, He's cool. Drawing. He's the first um, pro artist I've ever gotten feedback from. Really? Yeah. In, yeah. In, uh, Personal little story here. Yeah. I met him a couple of years ago at Supernova. Yeah, Brisbane. that's where I met him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I turned gay for a little moment to Tommy <laughs> Farland. He could have he could have said anything to me and I would have done. He was the nicest. He was person in comics I've ever met. He was so down to earth, and uh, we got to talk one on one at, from a retail point of view yep. to a, to the head of Tommy Farland Productions. You know, was, he sat me down. I asked him some questions about um, some of his, his stuff that he'd been doing with his, the business. And he was gracious enough to take the time, sit there, explain things to me. That's and awesome. It wasn't a, it wasn't a fob off. He was just a nice, no, genuine. No, he guy. was. Uh, I tell you what, a lot of these top guys are really nice. Like uh, I've had the same lovely experience from Louise and um, uh, Walter Simonson and Mark Wade uh, in particular is a lovely guy. 
Um, yeah, a lot of these guys are really, really, Dave really Finch nice people. Dave Finch, met him a couple of years ago. Yeah, really nice. and um, a guy who I, I, I hand on heart was never a big fan of his writing. Um, Brian Michael Bendis got to meet him last year. Yeah, one of the most yeah. down to earth guys. He you could signed ever books at my soldier table. Really? He was walking by. He said, "Hey, Paul. Oh, hey, how you doing?" He said, "Yeah, good." He came over and chatted and blah blah blah. I said, "I've got to come over later because I really loved his Daredevil run." Yeah. He goes, "You got the books here?" I went, "Yeah." He goes, "Okay, cool." Such a nice bloke. We actually caught, caught up with him when we went out to dinner that night on the coast. That's so awesome. I swear we weren't stalking you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, <much>. sure. <laughs> uh. But no, Todd, Todd, Todd was really cool. Like his his lesson was all on posing. I think he spent like twenty five minutes, held the cues up, didn't care, yeah. drew, drew on my work, you know, just blah blah blah. Such a nice guy. And then, uh, but I had this moment where I like, did I fuck this up? Because, you know, I, I, I it's not like I don't. I, I'm not like Popeye the sailor, but. You know, shook his hand at the end, and he's rather a competitive guy, a sportsman and stuff yeah. like that. And he must have felt that this was a tight grip, so he started like clenching the grip, and then he <laughs> and then he held on for like too long to that moment where like it I becomes awkward. I relaxed, and he was sort of like, yeah, that really <laughs> awkward moment of him flex, and I was like. <laughs> yeah. Thank, yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. I actually, um, he, he, I was saying no photos when when mm. I got to, to meet him, and uh, I said, and I cheeky bugger that I am, I said, <laughs> can I have a photo for the shop, Mr. McFarlane? And he's like, call me Todd, and he gra- and one of his assistants went to say no, no photos, and he just turned around, and he goes, it's fine, I'm having a photo. And he grabbed me, arm around, took the photo. We had the photo taken. Yeah. He wanted to see. He goes, is that good quality? Oh, look at that. No, take it again. And you know, and like, yeah, yeah. Neil good Adams good. was like that too. He's like, have a look, and oh yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. We need more people like that. You see, you're, you're like that. We've dealt with you at, at Supernovas and everything else. You go out of your way. I have to. I'm, no, I'm a nobody. Hey, you, <laughs> there's somebody here on Geekspeak. Let me I appreciate it. Um, now, you've got a one-shot coming up. I do. You're working on? Uh, Come on, give us the goss. Mi- I'm, a fan, uh, I'm a reader. So <laughs> I'm, for those who don't know, Paul con- considers his his followers to be readers, not fans. And I, and I get it. I agree now. You, you pointed out before because like, they read your stuff. They're yes. not just, they're not, like, fans are just kind of blindly following everything, I guess, but... Well, I wouldn't say blindly following, but I think you, you'd have to be uh, on a pretty high horse to c- consider people that buy your stuff, like, oh, they're fans of my work. Like, yeah. Like, get off the they, they enjoy it. Yeah. But exactly. they probably enjoy a lot of stuff. They enjoy it, and a lot, and in particular, they're supporting. Yeah. I, I find them a support. I think the only one you can I call, call them soldiers on, yeah, online. I, I call them soldiers that. troops. I get a kick out of it too because I sit there and go, Paul, call me a soldier. Yeah, you're all my soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Are you in charge then? No, 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 no. no. Like Stan, general, eh? Stan is like the generalissimo, generalissimo. Yeah, <laughs> the brigadier and stuff like that. I'm, um, I'm one of the non-coms, yeah. I guess, <laughs> out, the out in the trenches I'm yelling the at you. I'm kitchen peeling potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, it's about all I'm good for. Yeah, gold brick and Yahoo. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> for your readers, tell, tell your readers. What's um, your one shot? Yeah, uh, I was lucky enough, because uh, I work quite a bit with, my, he's a writer uh, and a good mate and a mentor of mine, um, Christopher Sequeira, who does The Duck Detective. Really and, good And he, um, he offered, when Soldier got picked up by Black House, he rung me in and, he, and he said, well, we'll use um, Dr. Nicola, who is an anti-hero in his um, series. But actually, Dr. Nicola is, a, is an old um, Australian pulp character created in the turn of the century. Oh, wicked. So he was, at the time, like when the books were coming out in like the 1900s, um, he was as big as like Fu Manchu back in the day. And he's pretty Sweet. much like a yeah. Fu Manchu sort of character. Guy's name's, uh, the author's name's Guy Boothby. Um, but anyway, so he used this character and he meets like a, a, a an 1880s version of, of the soldier character because like obviously m- my guy wouldn't have been born yet. Um, so Wouldn't have been a twinkle in his father's eye. Exactly, exactly. So, But that was cool because then we, we, it was getting around the problem of, all right, well, who's the who's the military in 1887, you know, back in the day and, and did a bit of research and uh, the Victoria Mounted Riflemen were, were a militia group uh, formed in 1885 and it was the first time in our, in our history where the slouch hat was worn. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it was so a... So you were able to incorporate all that into it? Yeah, so it was an opportunity just to, to take their uniform and, and create that character. Um, so we did a, a, a... It's a three-parter and I'm penciling the last part now, which will feature in Dark Detective 9 when it comes out, but we're going to release the one-shot first. It'll be the, the three issues, um, or the three stories, uh, and then uh, an eight-page backup story that Chris and I did. It was actually a, a, a Marvel pitch, and, and we sent it to, to Mark Wade, and he's like, yeah, this is really cool, but you know, at the time, the editors were like, well... We don't. We just don't. Have, you know, they're really overworked over in the states. So yeah. um, uh, 
we took that idea and went, oh, well, what, let's see if we can manipulate that idea and, and, and create awesome. our own little thing. Yeah. So uh, it, it's pretty much the, the Dirty Harry of Exorcist oh. working with like a team of um, demon hunters who are actually, you know, demons themselves. So, uh, and he, he hates working with people so if you can picture that that's the little the eight pager in that's the back of that good short film right there too <laughs> yeah well that actually uh we we on the way to san diego last year um it was really cool i got to meet one of chris's mates who does the covers for dark detective yep. dave elsie they're a beautiful beautiful set of covers yeah well he he won the oscar for the makeup on the wolfman um in 2011 so we got to go to his la studio and, and walk around and see all the alien props from the films, um, he did. I'm so um, jealous, this guy. So many cool people. Uh, I'd, I'm going to start following you around everywhere you go. <laughs> like, who's that guy? No, it's got Look, I, I, just ignore him. I told him. you what De Niro said to me: don't name drop. So <laughs> I believed him. I went, did you? Do you know De Niro? He done that. He did. Yeah, look. Um, yeah, you're evil. Uh, no, I don't mean. Look, so where's, I, where's one shot coming out? March. I'm going to bring it out for uh, my first trips to uh, Western Australia and South Australia. I'm going to um, the Perth and Adelaide Oz Comic Con. Adelaide, beautiful city. Yeah. Well, there. I've never been Have to been? either. Good. So check it. Run them all. Go down the pulp, fi uh, pulp Fiction comics. Down I've there. heard of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. yeah. Check them out. Really good. Cool. Um, Perth, beautiful city as well. So you're going to Oz Comics. Yes. Oz, Oz Comic Con. Um, should be awesome. Yep. They were really nice to me last year, and, and, I, and I got a really nice uh, invite. So I'm going to all three shows this year. Fantastic. And, and then um, you're doing Supernova as well? Supernova uh, in April. So we've got Melbourne and then the Gold Coast. Yeah, looking forward to the Gold Coast one. Geek Speak will be there. Yep. And then I think the only other thing I got penciled in so far um, is uh, in May, Free Comic Book Day. I think Gifts of the Geek jumped in and said, um, come down yeah so. they beat us I was going to get you up there for Kaboom <laughs> Comics and Twomer but next year buddy pencil yeah, it in there yeah alright that would be that would be fantastic yeah. thank you so. <laughs> he's like I'm not coming up to Twomer no we're, no no no. We're, we're, always... mountain, we're mountain folk I'll, I'll give you some good moonshine <laughs> yeah <Yeehaw! laughs> <laughs> uh, Soldier Legacy pop along to any great comic Australian comic book store um, um, pretty pretty much um, they can order like it no, I don't can, know. Can our New Zealand fans? They uh, can, they can I'm if they... I'm fans because, you know, we've got fans <laughs> in New Zealand. Because <laughs> yeah, we, we put sheep in some episodes. Sweet as bro. Um, um, yeah, if if you get onto blackbooks.net, any retailer can order Black House Comics through there. Yep. So they should be able to order the trade. And uh, look, the publisher's got all five issues there. So I don't know if issue five's up on the website, but if you pester him, he'll send it over they'll, for sure. They'll get it over there. Yep. So if you're in New Zealand, make sure you hit your comic shop up to get it in for you all retailers get a, a good good discount for um, the books so and it's great I to see Aussie comics um, selling as well as they, as they are right now like um, you go back there to is the a real um, uh, is it the term zeitgeist or zeitgeist yeah there is a real um, growth um, in the Aussie scene and, and a renaissance there's a great renaissance <laughs> <Australian comics. laughs> yeah. uh, no it was really good you can do uh, that after the interview mate <laughs> <laughs> no it's really cool like a anybody can just you know, pick up a pencil and paper, and and that that's the good thing about the comics medium no, not in general. Anybody. Paul, I've tried, and you know what? Stick figures don't. Mate, sell. all you got to do is buy buy a table at at Artist Alley, and and as long as your work is appealing to somebody, then you're in the scene. Yeah, that's that's, that's somebody's probably my director. He'd buy it. It'd be a pity buy. It'd be like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I I started with pity buys, and I think still a lot of them would be pity <laughs> buys. Oh, no, so. Quality work. Check it out. Soldier Lex. Thanks for coming on Geek Speak and having Thank a chat Thank you so today, much Big for Summer. having me. I appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Geek Speak, Paul Mason, Soldier Legacy. Whoa.